Hi guys, this is Pete and 6QW. I'm shouting here because I've gotten some complaints that the audio quality wasn't any good on the uh, using the GoPro Hero 3. Uh, we've gotten several inputs that said they can't hear me and, and my voice is not really low. So uh, if it sounds like I'm shouting, I'm trying to address uh, some of the comment and feedback that we've received. Uh, today I want to cover the, uh, the part of the Let's Build Something uh, project uh, that deals with the Arduino. And I'd like to first of start with a, a little schematic pictorial here of the basic um, uh, 9850 uh, DDS and how that's interconnected to an Arduino. Here's the uh, 9850 DDS. You can see that in my left hand. We've got the famous AD9850 chip, a little crystal oscillator here, capacitors and resistors, a pot. There's a couple of outputs that you can balance the output. On the underside, um, it has all the connections essentially along this side. So if we turn it over this way, everything is connected on, on this side right here. There are six connections that go to the Arduino. These include the reset data, a term called FQUD and W clock, and of course five volts and ground, and one comes out of the uh, DDS and that's the Z out. That's the output, that's the RF coming out of there. Essentially, we hook this up to digital pins 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12. 4, 5, 6, 7 are ones that get connected to the 9850. 11 and 12, in addition to ground, are co connected to the encoder. Pins A4 and A5 are part of the I squared C, which is the bus, uh, in addition to 5 volts and ground, that's connected to the LCD uh, display. So instead of having to, to have 6 or 8 or 10 wires go to the LCD, this little device called an I squared C backpack takes the four inputs, A4 and A5, plus 5 volts and ground. And you can see here I soldered a, a connector on here that just uh, have a mating connector on the back of the LCD. So that just plugs in. So the, the wiring is pretty simple. And uh, for this project, we're recommending the Arduino Nano uh, because it's a pretty small size. You can, you can get a pretty small footprint out of it. And they work uh, very, very well. Although I must tell you, uh, some of the Arduino Nanos that are floating around today uh, are count have a counterfeit chip on them. And uh, so when you go to load code, it may not load. But if you uh, do a, uh, a uh, internet search on YouTube, look for Unbrick FTDI. It tells you how you can manually load the COM port on there. Uh, you can also use the uh, quite large Uno, which is right here. And uh, this I would recommend to start with. Get yourself an Arduino, a real one, Uno. Put a bunch of headers in here and then wire those to a series of terminal blocks. You keep putting headers in and out of here, you're liable to short something or you're liable to break this uh, somewhat fragile piece of plastic right here. I wired them out to a terminal block breakout board so that I can do all the wiring here. And as you're going through the development, you can make sure everything works and that you've got... Uh, you know, the program working exactly like you want. And of course, this is quite large uh, to use uh, on the receiver or and ultimately the transceiver, but it, at least it'll let you get your feet wet. And then later on, you can shift to the Nano or in the case, what I have running here is what's called the Pro Mini. So here's our 9850 board and here's the Pro Mini. Now, the only thing that Pro Mini uh, doesn't have that the, um, the Nano has, it's missing... Uh, the uh, serial interface. Uh, the Pro Mini was developed with the idea that <clears throat> you'd program it once embedded in a product or in a, in a circuit or something and you wouldn't be programming it any further. Although you can do it with these six pins right here, I have an adapter cable that lets me connect that to the USB port and that's got the USB, uh, USB interface to serial interface so that you can talk to this board. So uh, that, that's just an accessory, but it makes it pretty small. This is like about two and a half inches by maybe one and a half inch. Uh, this is really small and everything is contained here. I, I also put a bunch of pin headers along the bottom so I can plug in connectors here. This one connector has the uh, encoder go into it uh, as well as some of the uh, controls for the uh, LCD. Here's uh, pins A4 and A5 are hanging off the end here. Here's the raw power in, which we recommend 7 to 10 volts, somewhere in that range. 
although I keep it lower to the 7 versus the 12 because there's an onboard regulator on the Arduino that's got to drop that 12 volts down to 5 volts, which it produces an output here, so you're really making that thing work. Uh, I did have a little handy-dandy device that I acquired some time ago, but I can no longer find. It's made by Meanwell. This is a little DC to DC converter. It takes anywhere from 9 to 18 volts in and produces 9 volts out. Uh, quite handy. As a matter of fact, I have this thing wired up. Uh, so that's essentially a little rectifier power supply here. You can actually put anything in here up to 24 volts AC or DC and still produce 9 volts for the Arduino. It's too bad they don't make this anymore. At least it's not been being carried by some of the distributors I normally deal with. But uh, do yourself a favor. Build yourself a 9 volt 1 amp power supply. You can buy a 3 terminal regulator. They don't cost very much. And set that up and that's what you should use to uh, drive your Arduino. Um... Here's the front panel uh, of the Let's Build Something digital display. And that's all it is, is the digital display and the backpack that we spoke of earlier. And the uh, four wires just plug in here. And we show in the diagram the four are ground, five volts, SDA. That's the data and the clock. And A4 and A5 provide the data to the clock. And then, of course, the five volts and the ground. Uh, we put a little extra space in this panel because as we go into the next phase... Uh, where we actually build the sideband transceiver, this panel space will be taken up with some of the controls like the audio control and switches and uh, uh, mic jack, phone jack. This, by the way, is made out of a piece of uh, galvanized metal you can buy at Home Depot uh, and it costs about 80 cents. And uh, you can bend it in a vise. And you can use the old drill method to cut this out. I happen to have a mill and I just milled the slot out in here so I can put the digital display. So, uh, Get, start, start off with something that you're not going to be in a hole with, with a regular, honest to God, genuine, certified U Uno, R3 U Uno. Build yourself a terminal block. You can do your development there. And then ultimately transition to something like the Nano or even the Pro Mini. But uh, it takes a little skill to use the Pro Mini because uh, it's kind of arcane how you load the code. Uh, but as long as you connect up, to digital pins 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, and analog pins A4 and A5. And you'll need A3 also for the encoder. Uh, I should mention that, A3 for the encoder. That's the push button on the back of the encoder. And what that lets you do is step through either 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz, or 10 kilohertz when you tune it. So uh, uh, not much wiring to take place here. Any Arduino will work as long as you hook it to these pins here. So uh, this is Pete, N6QW, and... Uh